Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Laurel Park. A happy Martin Luther King Day. Naomi Tucker with Keith Fusto right next to me. Keith, how are we doing and are we looking forward to today's card? Yeah, I'm just glad to be back. I didn't know I'd be, after the drive home last <laughs> night, I had no idea whether I'd be back here again. That was absolutely brutal. The snow just kicked in. The roads were awful. But yeah, looking forward to today's car. We got a sloppy track to deal with. We had that adverse weather uh, through the car yesterday into the evening. So uh, yeah, I do not know how this racetrack is going to play out. I'm going to lean for some of this uh, wet track breeding. Yeah, no, that, that's kind of what we both always key in on, yeah. right? When you're looking at uh, the off going, there are a couple of horses that either have proven they enjoy the track conditions or that their breeding suggests mm -hmm. that they might actually be moved up by it. But as I highlighted, we are racing today yes. on Martin Luther King Day, 12, 10 p.m. post. That's why we're sitting here a little uh, bit earlier mm -hmm. than usual. We've got 10 races to get you going on this Monday, January the 7th. And we're really highlighted. Let's have a look at the current track conditions as you can see the track is coined sloppy it's sealed we were mentioning we had a bit of snow last night but it did thankfully uh, kind of defrost and we had the snow kind of melt away yeah. a little bit which does result in a fair bit uh, of the moisture but of course so we'll keep everyone up to date in terms mm -hmm. of the tracks going and changes throughout the day yeah, and hopefully you know you usually don't root for a ton of wind maybe a little extra wind today help dry things out a little bit uh for that main track yesterday was our first day back i didn't really pick up on any major bias or anything the way that the way the track played i thought it played fair what i think we had I 10 different jockeys 10 different trainers win races I think if, if, if I looked at everything right so things were spread out yesterday all the wealth was spread out and I think you had to late pick four didn't you I did good job yeah all no, right. that wasn't very too good. bad at all mm -hmm. uh, actually you were right there that I thought the track was playing very fair we were mm -hmm. kind of looking at it you know our horses being able to make up ground our horses able to carry their speed and it seemed yeah. like a very honest track and as a handicapper so. mm -hmm. that is kind of favorable because it allows you to just go with the horse who you think mm -hmm. is going to get the best set up uh, in here let's start with Race number one. We actually start the early pick of five there. We have Tim yeah. uh, Tullock joining us uh, this afternoon again. And this is how he sees the sequence. He goes three deep there using the one, the four, and the six. And he tightens up a little bit using the one and the five there in race number two, claiming 16. The number one, Chica Rabiosa. Do you believe you like her a fair bit yourself? Mm -hmm. And he uses Middle Island for trainer Kieran McGee, who I actually uh, have in my exacta as well. Race number three, he goes three deep using the one, the three, and the seven. And then he he goes a little bit tighter again in race number four using the number four Tate who's actually my best bet of the day so hardly agree with him and the number seven triple Tito's towards uh, the outside for trainer Dale Capuana that might just be uh, a bit of a price mm -hmm. in there too race number five he uses one a four and six $54 flat ticket with kind of you know a good spread where it's going tighter in a couple of races that you can be a little bit more confident about but that's kind of how we like to uh, to play days like these because Look, when you have the off going, you do want to spread a little bit further. It yeah. can definitely bring certain horses back into form. Mm -hmm. and you don't want to get caught out there. So, yeah, first race of the card, claiming 16 to 12 and a half thousand. Norman is a three lifetime, six furlongs the distance there. Let's start with my top selection. You have him in second. Mm -hmm. We have video spotlight on Rising Perry, trained by Damon at Deloto Vico. Yeah. Looking back at his last race where it's just a bit of an awkward break. You can yeah. see him just going right to the outside, immediately loses position because of it. You can see the majority of the pack uh, mm -hmm. getting away from him. Kevin Gomez, you know, did well to just kind of try and uh, stay balanced himself as well as helping uh, his charge underneath him. Mm -hmm. But he kind of was patiently ridden then to get back into the race in, in you know in a good way that's kind of what you want to do as a jockey right yeah and this is a horse that was able to kind of relax he, he can take the rating he doesn't necessarily need the lead so the jock did the right thing let's let's get things settled regroup and he makes a pretty good run in between horses here around the turn and finishes up i thought willingly to the wire spitball who had a kind of clean trip high and wide about four wide is able to get up and reel in the speed of royal thunder but take nothing away uh from rising Pef perry's effort it was good despite that bad break. Now, top boss, the horse to the rail in the pink, was also bothered, was bothered by Rising Perry out of the break. He was used very hard. He'll be a speed presence today. And Metakmil, the gray on the far outside, uh, another one. Broke a little slow, came on late. I, I like the one horse, Metakmil, number one in here, a little bit better maybe at six even. I think he might bring a little bit of sharper run. Uh, the flow, we always like to talk about it. It's yeah. going to be top boss, Degas, Charm City Band. They're all pretty quick. Not a lot separating them. Um, 
the seven's like the question mark horse for me to see what this horse can bring back. Mm-hmm. But I like stay in. Uh, Naomi, I dug a little deeper on the breeding. Siblings combined, four for 13, nine for 13 in the money on an off-track second dam by Crafty Prospector. This is a horse the numbers have gone up in the barn. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. has to hold form and can get it done. Had a big, big field to deal with. Won't have that much to deal with today. Makes a move from off of it. Yeah, and he ran really well into an honest pace last time out. Like you highlight, it seems that there's going to be plenty of pace presence up so. front for him to help him out yeah. once again. So, yeah, I use him in my exact because I really think that he's on an upward curve uh, for trainer Dale Capuano. Race number two, Q's uh, your early pick mm-hmm. for yeah. ticket. Uh, how do we see things unfold today? Yeah, yesterday we had a big, big price kind of just – Kick us right on out of that 30 to 1. Well, 30 to 1 on the line, 20 to 1. Milan Milosevic, wire to wire, just gallop. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go with a single again here to get you started. Chica Rabiosa, I think there's, there's a couple other horses in here that worry me, but I think it's going to be the one's horse to lose, uh, one's race to lose on the front end. I single to one. Race three, three and seven. Miss Moreno, but you by golly. Uh, spread a little deeper here. We go uh, three deep. Tate, even money, going to take a lot of money. I do think he's a little bit vulnerable. He's lost a lot of races in a row. Triple Tito's, I agree with Tim. Um, price user in there as a speed presence in the fourth. Race five, one, two, four, seven, nine. Highly competitive, really contentious field there in the fifth, a mile for those claimers. I mean, that's, that's a tough one. That's a very yeah, tough race. I, I, I agree. I think the middle portion of this card, I, had a, I was going to go a middle pick four. Mm-hmm. It was just too expensive. It was too costly. I didn't want the, you know, the fans, you know, to kind of go Keith crazy. Keith with his $100 use, yeah, pick yeah, fours. Yeah, <laughs> use, use, use all their budget in, in, in one fell swoop. But, yeah, so we're going to stick with the early pick four. I guess, you know, if you had to add a horse, maybe Middle Island. I think Skylar's Lady offers a little bit more value. But I'm going to ride it out here with Claudio on the front end to start this uh, early pick four. But that kind of allows you as well as with that early pick four to perhaps go a little bit skinnier in mm. the early section of the car and then spread yeah. out in those last couple of races mm-hmm. to try and uh, dig up some uh, value there. So race number two, claiming 16 to 12 and a half thousand mile and 16 the distance here. Keith, you and I uh, both side with Chica Rabiosa. I mm-hmm. mean, we've seen her uh, develop here in her last couple of starts. And look, she is stretching out to the mile and 16 to two turns for the first time, but we yeah. know how strong Claudio mm-hmm. Gonzalez is with his runners going around the ground for the first time. I have him at a about 18% sprinter route here, but depends kind of what your parameters are. He can kind of go yeah. up a little bit too. And she has the pace. It's more a question of how far can she carry her pace? Is it yeah. going to be far enough? Yeah, I, I think so. You had some siblings there. I looked at the breeding this morning, carry it long on the turf. Um, imagining the stallion, he, he went a mile and a half on the grass. Yeah. So I think it's there. The Lasik's going on. I've got a little stat here over the last couple of years. It's three-year-olds, just the three-year-olds sprint the route for Claudio, about 26%. So a clean break. Alvelo win the opener yesterday, uh, I think, goes to the front and, and can control it in here. Yeah, I hope she will. I, I'm just kind of... I, I'm taking, you know, I have her on top, and I love using speed horses. Uh, I don't mind them on the off going. I mm-hmm. tend to think it works well. But, you know, it is a question mark. So I landed on the number five Middle Island in yeah. my exact. You have her in third. But I feel like she's run over the mile before. She flew from out of the clouds on a sloppy track. She's going to get that again here today. Mm-hmm does go around two terms for the first time but the way she was outpaced in that sprint race and the fact that she's already ran over a mile distance makes me think that she's a little bit more experienced yeah. with it and is going to find the pace set up more comfortable yeah that was first lasix last time she sustained into a contested pace she had things her her way after that break she's had a little issue with a- breaking slowly if mm-hmm. you look at some of her yeah. races she doesn't come away cleanly uh i'll use her into the mix kieran certainly capable off the claim uh, Skyler's Lady, I thought the two-back try was good. Last race, not terrible. Lasix going on. Family again. Mother could handle a route of ground. Klimt's still a little new here. We'll, we'll, we'll see mm-hmm. how his offsprings get a little bit better gauge when more runners go. But yeah. I think this horse is kind of that chaser and stayer in the second. So I'm oh, going to keep going. I like, you, I like your pick up on Skylar's Lady because okay. I feel like Chica Rabiosa and perhaps Middle Island are like the obvious yeah. horses yeah. in here. Perhaps Skylar's Lady can provide you a little bit of a value in that exact race. Number three, Nicol Klamer's number is a three lifetime for Phillies and Mares. One turn, one mile here. And uh, Keitha, we'll start with your 
top choice in here which is the number seven yeah. bet you by a golly look another one there's a couple in here that is taking a drop in mm -hmm. class uh, i think she was just a little bit close to quite a red hot pace for yeah. the distance of level last time out yeah. i think she's going to get similar conditions she ran on that muddy going and she'll get a sloppy track today and perhaps an easier group for her to deal with yeah she was able to kind of uh you know chase and stay close to that wicked pace now she was off well off the rail which you wanted to be kind of inside on the second so i'll give her a little plus there okay it is to me a negative drop she's shown some ability on the grass tim keith not the greatest percentages you know mm -hmm. on this kind of drop right. but with the scratch of the four i think she can shake away from uh walking out nanny a little early and just hopefully relax she's going to get weary late I'm hoping the wire saves her here. I think she's going to have to look in the rearview mirror for the three to make the run. I, she did ride the best part of the racetrack last time out. I feel like Miss Marino is the one mm -hmm. that's going to try and catch yep. your seven there because, you know, she's been running very, very well in their last couple. They also move her down to the nickel level. Mm -hmm. Now, this Claudio Gonzalez, they can afford to be aggressive. They yeah. have the numbers, place them uh, accordingly. I think this is the right field for her. And like you said, I think she's going to get that nice stalking trip. And uh, Jean Avella already had a winner yesterday mm -hmm. in the open. So mm -hmm. I'm sure he'll uh, like to get another one on board here. Race number four, optional claim at the starter allowance. Malwin 16, the distance there. And we'll start with another video spotlight. Look, I made him a best bet of the day. I thought I was quite taken by his effort here. That is the number four, Tate, the number five there on your screen. Sat happily behind the speed on the rail. Uh, ends up kind of trying to make a move uh, around it, as you can see mm -hmm. here, and did so very, very gamely uh, as well. I thought it was one of his better races. He did actually have to show a bit of heart there because trying to kind of get through mm -hmm. lock horns with big venezuela ends up later on putting that fall away right yeah but then can't hold off the closer that's running down the outside not his fault big price winner this day the one up against it had mm -hmm. trouble midway on the turn as well at around the 5 16th but yeah big effort i think the five dropped inside thinking you know big venezuela has a tendency to drift, and he didn't at the top of the stretch. He didn't really want to bother with that. Got caught up in that duel, but yeah. was game to the wire. He's one for fourteen. Um, got a little cheat in him, I think, just just a little <laughs> bit. I mean, you, you go back in that, that. That's a glaring advantage. The number last time, anything close. That's why I kind of lined him so strong. I think the public yeah. is going to come in strong on this mm -hmm. horse. Uh, this barn's been doing all right. Rob Cole when he hooks up with a strong percentage. Triple Tito's. I, I'm with Tim. I'm taking a little bit of a flyer. Didn't take a ton of play last time. I don't know what he's gonna, what you're gonna get here. Maybe, maybe if, if you can get six or eight, maybe he gets cut in half. Yeah, but twelve his, morning line. Yeah, right? yeah, I went twelve because he, he, you know, you see the dirtied up line last mm -hmm. time, but he just wasn't comfortable early. But they still protect him. He yeah. is the, he is the main speed here. He didn't run terribly uh, slow early on that three year old year. That route number is okay. I think he can improve I off of that. So as well. I'll take a shot. He goes to the front. Let's see how far he can go. Tim Tullock's price play of the day. There as you well. go. So you I and like Tim it. are okay. completely uh, in unison here right. and both on board. So yeah, perhaps that is the price play of the day. Triple Tito's mm -hmm. uh, in race number four. Race number five, claiming 12 and a half to 10,000. One turn mile here again. You land on host that I ended up using underneath. Uh, he is stepping it up against uh, D. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, of course, race number five, we have the pick six starting. Yeah. We will have uh, Cali later on today mm -hmm. as well, so we'll go through that ticket too. But Swing West, look, that last figure was very, very yeah. strong. That was sprinting on the off going, so shown that he's quite mm -hmm. capable of it. And he's done well on the go back at Gulfstream Park yeah. over the one turn mile, so I definitely give him credit for that. But I do feel like he's up against some tough runners in here. If Bellarmine Hall, for example, yeah. returns to form mm -hmm. or just really gets back, well, not returns to form, he's been winning, but runs back to some of that gaudy numbers that yeah. he's been running. So those higher 70s, lower 80s, I think he's going to be really tough. You agree. Uh, that's why I line him like a three to one. Maybe they, maybe they comes in a little bit stronger. He's a kind of an odd horse. You just said it. His numbers are all over the place. Mm -hmm. What, what do you kind of yeah. think? But I looked at some other uh, handicapping tools or that, you know, he's kind of held consistent fakes. So we'll, we'll see the buyer fix just jumping around. It's consistent enough. The three back try. Why, 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 uh, why, Paul, why, why, Paul, why good, strong horse. He's been reeling off victories. He's very, very fast. I think mm -hmm. he can get to stalking position in here. He, I guess if you say he's the, he's probably is the horse to beat. Um, the, the Swing West, yes, a little bit better field than he faced, but he did it pretty easy last time at a price. He's proficient at this mile, the one-turn mile distance. Yeah. I'll get an, another a shot at a price here. A horse that's kind of looks like he's going to get back on his game, where a lot of these others 
they're kind of middling. They're just kind of all over the place mm -hmm. with, with form. So I'll go recency, a good race. Let's see if he can pair it up right back. I also think Bellamy Ho has some recency looking for his yeah. third win in mm -hmm. a row, but yeah. I know Other what you him. mean yes. with perhaps some of his numbers fluctuating mm -hmm. ever so slightly and wondering which number he's going to run. But it's also the type, uh, he's also the type of runner that does just enough to get Correct. his nose in front. Mm -hmm. And can't we hold that against him as long as he gets to the winner's circle? Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't matter which number he runs because he's capable of running those Agreed. bigger, bigger numbers. So I hope he will. Both of us had a little bit of interest uh, as well in the 1A Solomonic. Mm -hmm. Also steps up for trainer Kier McGee after a really good uh, two-turn effort uh, right here at Laurel Park, which is kind of that perfect running style that we talked about, the flexibility mm -hmm. to kind of take position, take over, and comfortably stride away from the field. Yeah, I, I, I worry about this guy. I like the, the protect move, Kieran. You know, claim for five into the into the open 12. Yeah. His numbers work. His style kind of fits this group. He was very relaxed off the pace last time, just cruised up three wide. He can be in position, surely striking position by mid-turn, I would think, against this group. The real question mark, horse, uh, where did Bahamas Channel race come last time out? Just blitzed the field, yeah. draws off by 10 and a half. And here's an interesting stat. Now, I didn't use this horse in the mix. I will use in an exact box. I'm going to key around a couple prices. Okay. But, and Annette Eubanks doesn't run a slew of horses. But the last five years, seven for 42. You think, eh, that's 17%. Mm -hmm. But an ROI of 427, you get value. Uh, with a run, had a horse like uh, Hair of the Dog come back and run yep. at a big price. So yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe something's going on there. This this, this barn, they're, they're rolling right this now. This is a prices. wide open field. Mm -hmm. This is a tough race to try and uh, put your finger on. I also used Twitty City, who was in good form two and three back as well over the mile. There kind of has to uh, get back into the swing of things here. But likes Laurel, which I think is quite yeah. telling also. And, uh, yeah, I wanted to use him a little bit of price underneath. But this is the kind of race that could – absolutely garner a price play on yeah. that off going that we have today and kind of an evenly matched field really depends who turns up on the day stay with us for this uh, quick message and we'll be right back pegasus the divine winged horse that flew with heroes mounted for glory arrogant gun runner city of light mucho gusto and nicks go Thunder and the lightning on the track. Energy in the stands. Vibe. Fashion. Entertainment. All for one. Welcome back to Laurel Park. We've got a 10 race card coming your way. We are running on the main track. Sloppy is the current going. So we will uh, tell you if anything changes throughout the day. We do have some wind blowing. Maybe it will dry uh, out ever so slightly. Race number six, optional claimer, starter allowance. Phillies and mares, four-year-old and up. Six furlong, the sprinting distance. Keith, you landed on the number four, Tequila Fall, coming mm -hmm. off the back of a, a win where he was, she, excuse me, was claimed. It will now be going first off the claim for trainer Anthony Ferrier. We've been discussing how this barn has really mm -hmm. started to gather steam again. Wasn't as effective at Pimlico. Returns to Laurel. Really starts racking up the winners again. And this is a, a mare who seems to be in good form. And I like this protect move that they did with her moving her up mm -hmm. into this class. Kind of an angle again mm. with uh, the first race going back to stay in where I kind of unearthed some, some off-track breeding there. And mm -hmm. uh, Tequila Fog siblings, six for 15. Uh, no, I'm sorry, has, has two siblings. One was six for 15 and off. The other was four for eight in the off. And a lot of them in the money. So, yeah, and, and the protect move up in class, some speed to target. Ferry, the barn is heating up. Mm -hmm. I guess that's my hunch. But I got triple Tito's and tequila fall. That's what I needed. <laughs> I like last, that's what I needed here. last night when I got home. I can say after that drive. So there's the theme of today. Right. We're drinking some tequila. Hopefully, yeah. uh, tequila. Bet fall the horses with alcohol midnight. in their name. That's basically. it. Basically, <laughs> on on this, you know, this uh, uh, day that does contain a, a fair bit of moisture. Still, uh -huh. I guess that the alcohol can add a add a, a bit of a <laughs> blend to that. Look, Miss Old Bay is my top selection mm -hmm. uh, in here. This is a, a speedster who's uh, drawn towards the outside. Try to take them all the way uh, in October had a couple of days off uh, a move that the barn actually does pretty decently with only mm -hmm. a small sample but they can get a horse to win after that type of layoff she seems to have been working well at Pimlico so kept kind yeah. of going and look that was quite a big number last time actually she'll have to run something similar mm -hmm. to that but I believe that with the outside draw with kind of the 
the pick of the racetrack, yeah. uh, I think that Miss Old Bay can kind of be positioned wherever needed to keep on finding. She's fast. Uh, she she gets out there and she's going to roll early, mm -hmm. um, which I think is going to set up a little target for Miner's Gem. I don't know if it's quite as fast or but it shows a rating yeah. gear and she mm -hmm. showed it last time. Miner's Gem, uh, that's why I think she's going to make that move into it and maybe get the better of Miss Old Baby. Maybe sometime upper stretch, those two will battle. And then I'm looking for that setup. They come along late to tag them. Here comes Tequila Fog. We'll see. We'll see. If we'll it only see. was that easy. Right? Uh, let, well, <laughs> you know, you have a couple of price places that you've yeah. given us. Let's hope that they deliver mm -hmm. today. Then you can buy the drinks later on. Right. How about I'll be, that? I'll there be glad you go. To. Absolutely. <laughs> Race number seven, one turn, one mile, the distance first level allowance. We, uh, I landed on the number four friendly fellow. Do you have a spotlight mm -hmm. uh, on him as well? And that was uh, from a couple of races ago, the 18th of November right here at Laurel Park. That one turn, one mile. Mm-hmm. He sat as part of the pace the entire way. You can see Ben and Joe on the rail, friendly fella on his outside. He ranged up at the top of the stretch. Looks very comfortable doing so. The two of them locked horns and were absolutely relentless mm -hmm. battling down to the wire. I felt like it was a, an honest race. No loss re really, really in mm -hmm. either of them not getting, you know, not getting the win. Unfortunately, friendly fella was the one that ended up uh, being, you know, on the other end of the photo finish. Mm -hmm. But you see him here. It looks like he's got him in the pocket, right? It looks yeah. like he's got him. And then Ben and Joe comes back on the rail and just nabs him on the wire. And there's Royal Number just behind him who ranged right. up, who's in here again today. We thought would go right on by. He did not. He just hasn't gotten back to his top form royal number. Yeah. But friendly fellow, dead game. And we show these videos, and you and I, we, we're, we're always constantly on the show explaining, well, we want to visualize the race and help even a mm -hmm. novice who doesn't really can't understand PBs. But what to expect when they're watching the race? Where is your horse going to be? And showing that video is kind of like the race today. I think friendly fellow is going to be up forward I think so, in too. that stalking position. Maybe ratify is up with it. But that type of run, again, you should mm -hmm. see from friendly fell it with the pace or just off of it making a move and battling to the wire and s holding some type of position i would think yeah in the i agree money. with you there and then you use the number nine on top i have him in my exact here tis mandate for trainer damon de lodo vico mm -hmm. kind of looking back at not his last two but i'm coining around the race on the 25th of september where he was going the two turns and really really mm -hmm. was game down to the wire that's the kind of close yeah. he's going to have to produce today like you said there is going to be a good pace presence uh, on his inside plenty to run at mm -hmm. today i feel like it's kind of the day that he'll have to take that next step and step it up he's been around at this level for a little bit now was campaigned yeah. at stakes level ran second in the miracle wood was doing very very well mm -hmm. perhaps today's day that it's kind of you know what have we got here is he going to clear yeah. that first level allowance and, and move on to the two other then i think he's got a very very decent chance i think there's a couple in here like you said uh, i use royal number underneath as well he okay. hasn't gotten back uh -huh. to that form that he showed as a youngster i still hope he will but perhaps it's a similar story with tis Monday, except with a little bit of a shorter timeline yeah and this guy you look at his last two buyer figures at Laurel, they're good. 79, mm -hmm. 78. He's shown a little yeah. improvement. Even other things, okay. He has shown some improvement. Uh, is he a little bit pace dependent? I think he is a little bit pace dependent, but I think the groups that he's faced uh, works into his advantage here. So I, his grinding style, he had a real Overland trip last time. I didn't like that five watt all the way. He'll be able to yeah. hopefully drop in a little bit. Um, he pairs up races. I, th I think he can get over the top today and grind it out in a long, long stretch battle. I, yep. I hope he will, too. He'd love to see that for his connection. Who was that clearly showed a promise of talent. Mm -hmm. Now wants to take that next uh, allowance level step. I also yeah. use the number one, and so did you uh, ratify on the rail for trader Brittany Russell. Still don't exactly know what to make of that last race. Shot to the front, did very well, and kind of packed it in. That was on the mm -hmm. money going. I hope it wasn't the off going that did it because he actually broke his maiden on a sloppy uh, yep. course and distance right here. So perhaps he just had an off though, d did come back from a multitude months break. Let's hope he just perhaps needed the race to kind of get back into uh, yeah. business. He's got that one glaring number that jumps out at you, the 83 at Delaware. We've yeah. seen sometimes maybe a little inflated horses can go up there and run a big fake. Other than that, he's kind of like a mid-60 horse. 
He's going to have to run a little bit better. He seems to be a little bit better from just off the pace. Mm -hmm. That inside draw will have to be used a little bit too much to get position and then make another move. Can he sustain after that? I'm not so sure. I think Inc. might make a move into the pace around the turn as well. But even Armando R., price, another price user here for Damon. Uh, four for nine is Damon. Six for nine in the money. That's 44% winners. Smaller sample. Last mm -hmm. three years, third off of this kind of break, 60 to 180 day break. ROI is 540. So there's a Damon stat for you. Damon, Damon, 93. One of those two. Let's get it done. I like it. Race right. number seven. Race number eight, two on the den. Optional claimer then. We're going to mile distance here again as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, we might as well start on your top selection there, the one that we also have a video spotlight on, Bumper Do. His last outing was about 54 days ago. And yeah. he actually, we didn't even pick that up. In the first bend, he got shuffled back in that turn. He had to kind of wait mm -hmm. then again here in the home turn to even get out yeah. uh, once the gap appeared. I was watching him. And I was like, this is like three different things going on inside of his race every mm -hmm. time he kind of had to restart regather himself and unfortunately for him the worst of it is about to come up here yeah he's got some really strong figures to go back on it right he is just pocketed and nowhere to go boxed in probably what with three eighths all the way up here to about the three sixteenths. it looks like he has to go to a stand yeah, still here just, he's just, just kind of like Oof. stalled stymie yep. we like to use that as stymie That's but yeah and finally too. is able to kind of okay get it going the six mm -hmm. has got all the momentum in the world. He is a 20 to one shot. But just to give up six, seven lengths almost and the battle back to just miss like that. Third place finisher, Roan Mountain. I went back and looked. He's, pretty in, he's a pretty informed kind of a runner. Mm -hmm. This is a good run here. Um, this field in Laurel today might be a touch better than that one. But man, he's cycling the right way here with Ness and should be able to avoid too much traffic. Yeah, I was I, I was really switching mile. around in this race because I thought they were hard to separate. I, I ended up putting Bumper Do a, a touch further down in my picks because I was wondering about the strength of the field that he faced mm -hmm. again. I Agreed. think these are just a little yep. bit more seasoned, some of them just a little bit tougher. Mm -hmm. Boss Logic, that last race was a really, really hard race he ran. Led before being joined uh, on the lead by Big Venezuela. He uh, over Big Venezuela overtook him, but then Boss Logic just kind of sat with him, tried again, and completely rebounced on the rail like yeah. got a, a second win there now that 87 buyer that he ran look it's a career best figure but it was an honest race and it was an yeah. honest figure he did it mm -hmm. the hard way nothing was handed to him on the day no no and his other issue go back he sat just off the pace going a mile the one turn mile and came home in a strong final quarter he's in top form right now yeah on or just off the lead, he's going to battle you. So maybe he goes ahead and lets he's a shooter go. We'll see that opening quarter. But Boss Logic, a horse, I don't think that has to be certainly right to the front. He can sit if needed. We saw that rebattle last time. He, good, good, good horse right now. He's in very, very good form. Agreed. Race number nine, first level optional claim for straight three-year-old fillies. Six furlongs the distance. And I landed on She's Whiskey was your video spotlight simply because this is her first time against winners, which, which we always know is troublesome and, and tough. But this is a big field. She was capable of going close to lead or to the lead from the get-go. Now, mm -hmm. didn't go overly fast, so that was perhaps that first quarter was mm -hmm. given to her a little bit. But I mm -hmm. like the kind of professionalism and progression that she showed. I thought it was a big turnaround from her other couple of races. Perhaps the light just went on. The light bulb went on, and she was like, look, I know what we're doing. Yeah, she was sharp here. Uh, took some pressure, was able to go, this is my top selection to three, so if we can flip it, I'll get 50 lashes with a wet noodle after – doing a, a bad punch get a little forgiveness after everything we had to deal with but look at this effort through the wire the run on uh, on chia's whiskey so i'm three seven two eight in here that time and you look at the time very good comparable it was even faster than older boys two in life 16 i think that was big tall, tall big jump up here the leg six goes on i think she's ready to score again from on or just off the pace. I agree with you there. I was, I was very taken by that run. Both of us used money's worth uh, underneath mm -hmm. as well for Tim Keith. Broke her maiden on her second try. Now also steps it up here. But that was a, another kind of run that she had to bide her time. Wasn't afraid of passing horses down the lane. Had to actually really, really fight for yeah. it and did so. So I feel like in terms of her development and her experience, she would have gotten something out of that. Absolutely. Out of a key race and debut. I like that. She really relaxed there with Forrest last time out just off the pace and was resilient to the wire. Resolute, I should say. I, I, I like this effort. Uh, Off-track breeding. It's there. 
she should you know, she should relish it when you really kind of break it down. So I'm going to take these two horses, the the uh, the recent maiden breakers. Hopefully we can get the exact here. I'll key around these two. Um, mm -hmm. You have any real price? I guess my sneaky price would be click to confirm. Just getting on Lysix, maybe. Mm -hmm. And I, as we talked about, this is going to be interesting. The first couple of months with these horses, uh, the two year olds now turning three. See, I feel like Mama G's wish was interesting just because she has the most experience of any of the horses mm -hmm. in this field. Broker maiden two starts ago, then went on and won again at the claiming 25 level. Seems to really kind of grasp the concept here. Has an abundance of speed, mm -hmm. outside post position, giving herself options. And we know that Jerry. Rob and Xavier Perez are just very, very good together with these youngsters, with these ladies. Yeah. Uh, maybe she can continue to progress forward. Look, if you look at her speed figures, that last one is, of course, the standout. She'll have to run up to those kind of numbers because mm -hmm. some of the other ladies in here have shown to be that talented that they kind of run those numbers a bit earlier in her career. But at the price, I think Mama G's wish yeah. is interesting as well. Absolutely. Another race, I, I don't know if you can take, you see when I've got the favorite at seven to two. <laughs> You can't take less than three on anybody in here if you're keen around it, in my opinion. Well, we shall see. I'm hoping I can get around seven to two, four on Shea's Whiskey when it's all said and done. Final yeah. race on the card. Race number 10, six furlong dash, claiming 16 to 12 and a half. No one's a two in their career. And uh, you landed on the number two, Hufflepuff mm -hmm. for trying to marry Saray Jr. Uh, drops down quite significantly here. Has been running uh, in his last couple, uh, her last couple, excuse me, at the allowance level. Wasn't completely disgraced doing so either perhaps you were you know when you're looking at her numbers this is a better fit for her oh, in absolutely. here and she is on paper at least the one to beat based on that class relief that she's getting absolutely I, is is the speed of the speed no doubt about it um last time out she broke she was close and then had to ease back i watched that again ever so slightly uh into the turn and she tried to make another move which i i thought you know she's a little bit more hard and then flat and late uh, she's on the engine here. Uh, she's to the front with a good break, and I think she can control it. Uh, question mark with a seven. Seven working well, mm -hmm. coming back. First time Lasix might get that stalking position outside. See, I like Fortis getting down to that non-win is a two lifetime condition for the first time as well. Uh, she didn't see out the mile last time out, so I like her now coming back to the six furlong distance. I think that's going to work better for her. Okay. Uh, look, it was a she's run better over the sprinting distance than looking at like her mark two starts ago. That's the kind of race she needs to run, perhaps a little bit. And if Hufflepuff you know, doesn't line up like the Hufflepuff she can be, yeah. I think the number five okay. uh, could definitely come up and uh, get her picture taken here today as we'll move on to lightning round. Do we have some stakes action coming your way? Saturday, January the 29th, six stakes races, 550,000 in purses. We're looking at the spectacular bid mm. for the straight three-year-old boys, seven furlongs, the extra heat for the straight three-year-old girls, the Jennings, the Geisha, the Fireplug, the Water Summer. I mean, Keith, so much to look forward to. Mm. So much work that has to be done <laughs> for all of us. No, but uh, it's going to be great. It's always a good day, the Winter Carnival Day. Yeah, move to the 29th due to our weather and everything like that. So, yeah, looking forward to lots of money uh, lots of talent on display on the 29th absolutely mm -hmm. and then we do have a, a wonderful initiative uh, coming up uh, it's been running for a few decades now the art of racing uh, the preakness and the maryland institute college of Art to continue, which is a community-wide call for entries of original artworks in relation to, you know, the beautiful sport of horse racing. And if you win, the winning artist will receive a $4,000 stipend. Their artwork will be reproduced. They get tickets for Preakness 147. Mm. So definitely a couple of prizes that uh, I think uh, a lot of the local artists uh, would be very, very happy to receive. Now, deadline for your entry comes up on March the 2nd, Wednesday, 2020. 22 so make sure that your artwork is entered uh, to be in it to win it and look at that artwork i love that one as well so if anyone That's coming fair. up with those kind of uh, visual creations i'll happily uh, enjoy uh, combing through the uh, entries and the finalists uh, to, to see what everyone came up with now back to mm -hmm. some of the racing action we did uh, of course uh, get the um, eclipse award finalists in and one of them of course our very own maryland bread nicks go i mean eclipse award finalist all the dirt mal 
plus, you know, very much touted to take home that very coveted Horse of the Year award. Yeah, I think he is your solid favorite, no doubt about it. What a year he has had, how he's blossomed of late. Phenomenal job by everybody involved. Yeah, rooting for the home team here, no doubt. Yeah, seeing him win the Whitney there mm -hmm. at Saratoga, for, of course, our 2021 Breeders' Cup Classic winner there with co-breeder uh, Sabrina mm -hmm. Moore. So it's been, you know, an absolutely wonderful story. And let's hope he goes out with a bang in the Pegasus World Cup, right? Again, life is good. And so our fingers and toes crossed for this uh, standard bear Maryland bread. But talking about another successful Maryland bread, Aloha West is in was is a finalist in the male sprinter category. We watch him there in the Breeders' Cup sprint going head to head with Dr. Shivel and just, uh, just being able to hold on. You can see him closing very, very fast <laughs> there on the outside. And pff, I mean, that was such a close call. Right. I think it was too close uh, to call for Larry Comas. I think all of us were really, really wondering if he got there in time, and uh, he did. Absolutely. Thrilling finish. That was a, that was a great, great horse race. No doubt bring back some memories from the Breeders' Cup not that long ago. Yeah, I think influenced quite a few guys upstairs in their uh, multi-race wagers. So yeah, you know, Jose Ortiz absolutely <laughs> riding <laughs> him that. to the wire yeah. to try and get his nose uh, down in time mm -hmm. there. Flavian Pratt on Dr. Shivel. So quite the treat of a British Cup sprint, mm -hmm. but indeed there's another Maryland bread that brought home the spoils on Breeders' Cup Saturday. Now, that will do it for us this morning show. I'll be back this afternoon with Tim Tullock and Kelly von Schrapp will be joining us as well. And, of course, as usual, Dave Rotman will be up next uh, to let you know about the changes for today. All righty. Good luck.